So, what is up, everybody? For those of you who don't know, my name is ResLived. We are here to talk about Smash 4, do some analysis, learn us some stuff about characters that we don't see a lot in competitive play. Specifically today, we're going to be talking about Rob, as you can see in the title, or as you can see over over there. I, I put his picture over there. Um, unfortunate circumstances, I'm really hoping the video doesn't end up being choppy, and I keep looking over there to check my OBS, because the internet in my apartment actually totally died today, and I jerry-rigged the setup with my laptop using Wi-Fi, and this will, this will be fun! We're, you know, throwing analyses together at the last second. Ugh. Um, but yes, so what are we talking about? Today we're talking about Rob. We're talking about Rob in Smash 4, because Holy Nightmare went on a absolute rampage at Get On My Level this year, um, taking out Nakat in loser semis, which I think a lot of people consider an upset. Um, everyone else, he seemed to do pretty well against. He lost to Black Twins in winners and just took it back in losers. Uh, it felt like he kind of got the download. I think Black Twins actually put up a harder fight against um, Holy Nightmare than Nakat did. And then Pope just got destroyed. Uh, he, he took a couple games, but it felt like Holy Nightmare was in control the whole time. And what we're going to talk about is we're going to talk about why he was in control the whole time, and we're going to talk about some Rob basics. Um, one of the things I really like about Holy Nightmare's Rob is it's very straightforward. He does a lot of the same moves in neutral, but then uses the obvious mix-ups from those moves. He, you're going to see a lot of Nair, and you're going to see a lot of Gyro. Those are the two big moves that he likes to throw out in neutral a lot. And as we're going to see in these replays we're going to look at, they're incredibly safe, and especially the way Holy Nightmare does them, incredibly effective. And without further ado, we're just going to go ahead and jump into this first replay right here. This is from Grand Finals. This is after uh, Holy Nightmare had just reset the bracket and had, uh, in pretty wonderful fashion, was ahead and ready to just start going to town on Poke. And we can switch to this view, although we won't be here very long because we're just going to start it off. Three, right. two... One, he's going to fire the laser, and then already I'm going to stop this replay. Because <laughs> we already have to talk about something that Rob does, and that's this gyro. This gyro positioning is huge, and he's going to do this, Holy Nightmare is going to do this a lot. Um, and he's just going to charge gyro to see what his opponent does. Um, Poke, is he's running in now, but he's going to switch to shield in a second and the reason for that is because holy nightmare is actually threatening all of this space and actually the longer he charges this gyro the more space he ends up threatening because it of course flies farther this is actually pretty pretty strong because as we're gonna see um poke is gonna run up and shield the gyro he's just gonna shield it but the shield push from this gyro is insane Holy Nightmare just knocks him out of the way. There is no chance he's getting punished for this. And it's just such a smart option from this early game neutral. And we're going to let it play. Boom. Just like that. Look at how far Poke was thrown away. He tries to fare out of shield. And Holy Nightmare is already all over. And he's just going to nair and cover all of this space. So if we back up to just a couple seconds, we can already see right there. Gotcha. All right, so game two, back we can already see that just from using this gyro to threaten this space, he forces Poke up here, but he already has it covered. That literally was the plan from step one, is he's going to charge gyro, force Poke into the air, and then just knock him out of it. And as we're going to see, he actually just gets away with free damage. And there we go. And literally, as soon as that ends, he goes to the other side of the stage and he does it again, as you just saw. He was actually charging his gyro again. And the other cool thing about that is this time he uh, he mixes it up. He instantly puts it away. I didn't even pause it in time because he just put it away so fast. But look at what Poke is doing. Poke is already in shield. And he's actually going to fall for the exact same trick twice. It's this coverage of options that... Um, it's, it's more actually it's the pressure that Holy Nightmare is putting on Poke right now. That's going to get him hit by this Nair again. And just, he's doing so well with this pressure. Just charging the gyro is what's really throwing off Poke. Alright, and now we're going to talk about this. Something else that Holy Nightmare likes to do. This spacing is actually really hard to do. Um, if you just buffer a down air out of short hop, you're going to hit the ground and like no hitbox is going to come out. 
Holy Nightmare manages to put this down air at an exactly this spot, such that he will break any snaps if he times it right, but he can also catch people going over the ledge, and he can also cover really fast jumps from the ledge. And by covering all of this over here, this down air covers this, Holy Nightmare is just going to fall down, land, and down smash. And that covers all of these grounded options over here. And it's a really smart option that he does a lot. It's super potent because there's very few things that Pope can do about it. Um, as we're going to see right here, he's already down airing. He's going to come back and down smash. And then literally, the next time Poke tries to recover, he's going to do it again. But this time, the down air is going to hit. As we're going to switch right on back to this. Oops. So there he goes. Down air gets the down smash. Oh, Poke's coming back. Let's down air again. Easy. So simple. So, so simple. Look at what we've covered. In just the first stock, Holy Nightmare has just made really strong use of Gyro to take control of the stage. And he's done this edge guard where he goes with down air to down smash. And immediately just takes a stock. Just out of nowhere. Hits him like six times in neutral or something. And the game is just already won. Like, th this... There's no chance for Pope to come back, but it's really smart play from Holy Nightmare, and it's really smart. He gets the gyro fully charged up, and I like to point out that um, in Smash 4, it's actually pretty difficult to deal with opponents' uh, incoming inv invincibility, especially a character like Luigi, who can just build up 50 damage instantly. Holy Nightmare actually just jumps all the way up here. The reason for this is because... Um, First of all, up B can get him up there, and Luigi kind of can't get up there unless he, you know, blows his double jump, which not many Luigis want to do, or if he commits to a tornado or anything like that. But what Holy actually gets from this position is the ability to auto-cancel Nair. So auto-canceling Nair, of course, is a big, beefy move that covers a lot of space, and as soon as Poke leaves the ground, Holy's just going to come down on him with Nair, and it's going to auto-cancel, and he's going to get follow-ups out of it. That's how good this uh, positioning is. If Poke doesn't leave the ground, however, if Poke actually stays grounded, this position is pretty bad for Holy Nightmare, because he doesn't have many landing options. Even even in Brawl, you had the ability to you know use back air to move maneuver around and wave bounce uh, gyro charge. Holy Nightmare, unfortunately, can't do any of that because he's already up beat, and the only thing Rob is allowed to do out of up B is an aerial. He, he literally cannot hit the B button or air dodge until an aerial comes out first. So the only valid mix-up he has, other than falling Nair, is to fare out of his up B and then try to air dodge to the ground, which can also be punished by Poke just staying grounded. But like I said, as soon as Poke leaves the ground, he just gets hit by this falling there, and already Holy is, in, is back in good position, and ahead on percent, he hasn't even been hit yet in this game. So that's super cool. And so I talked a lot uh, in the first talk, we talked a lot about the gyro, and the other major tool that Holy's going to use throughout this entire tournament is he's going to do a lot of nair. You need to stop. How many so as he comes down with this know. nair, he's going to just start short hopping nairs out. He's going to hit one right there. He hits another one in like a second, and then he hits like a third just immediately after because he can. Just like that. The nair, and this is where I'm going to take a break and talk about why nair is so good. And we can even back up and look at this last one just as an example. Nair is, act, It's first of all, it auto cancels in a short hop. Um... So, I mean, it feels almost unpunishable if you space it correctly. Uh, secondly, the, the first hitbox is around here, and then Rob is going to go all the way around and bring an end with a hitbox here as well. And that's really potent because he starts and finishes the move with a hitbox in front of him. So not only can he get a quick hit in front of him, he can then land with a hit in front of him, all with the same move, which is a really, really nice uh, a point with that move. But on top of that, the fact that it's fairly safe on shield actually gives Rob a lot of mix-ups. He can get jab and down tilt if his opponent tries to shield drop, but he can also space it so far away that he can get like F smashes if opponents try to jump out of shield. And Holy Nightmare does an excellent job of reading his opponent's out-of-shield options for the entirety of this set. Um, this specific one right here, I was just talking about how he puts hitboxes in front of him. 
that's so strong. It's the hitbox in front of him. Uh, Poke is actually going to jump back with a fireball, and it, and he just nares through it and gets even more damage for it. Uh, boom. And, oh, wait, here we go. He comes back. Fireball? Nope, I just nair you. Super clutch. And he's just going to keep throwing them out, too. And as we saw right there, that was a nair where he came down and just hit shield and just jabbed anyway. That's enough to just make it slight. Actually, that might even be more embarrassing. And we're just going to see Holy Nightmare take a little bit of damage. Poke needs to do something to make this game not look like a massacre. Oh, and here we have Holy Nightmare off stage. This, this maneuver, this is actually one of my favorite things that Holy Nightmare did because every single player in the tournament fell for this. What he does is he comes up and he up airs, and up air brings him back down to here. So he'll up B. And he'll look like he's going to the edge, and then he'll up air again. So he kind of hits all of this space, because you can up air through the stage. And he hits all of that space, and then he just does it again. And he literally, with every person in the tournament, he either does it until it works, or he does it until he sees that opponent holding shield. And it was so smart. He would just go in for it every time. And let's see, what we hit. as he gets it here... Um, he actually could have lost this out, but Luigi kind of messed up the timing, but he just goes up for it. And we can watch it again. He literally does three up airs in a row. He just does it until it works. I went back a little bit too far, unfortunately. We can just see Holy Nightmare be good until he gets knocked off stage. Here we go. And one up air, and two up airs. Did I hit him yet? No, three up airs. Oh, good, he's away. Let me go back on stage. So smart, and it's so simple too. It's in, it's unreal how well that worked. And there we go. Safe nair on shield, no punish. Safe nair, no punish. Let's throw out another one. Safe nair, no F smash punish. He got a punish for putting out a safe nair on shield. That's how ridiculous that this Rob nair is. It's so smart and so strong. And Holy Nightmare just abuses it against Poke, and Poke just doesn't have any way to deal with it. Don't worry, I, saw, I see the chat, I just didn't feel like responding. Yo, shout out to you guys, though. <laughs> if you guys, seriously, though, while we're doing this analysis, if you have any questions, let me know. I'm here to talk to the chat. If you see me looking this way, I'm looking at the chat. If I'm looking this way, I'm either watching the game or trying to talk to the camera, which is actually impossible. Here we go. So we see this Nair just coming in for the clutch for Holy Nightmare. He just... He utilizes it so well in all of these games. It's the Nair and Gyro. You're gonna that's gonna be the repeating themes of Holy Nightmare's play. Nair and Gyro. Oh look, I'm off stage. Time to up air until I hit an opponent so I can make it back. And he's gonna go down air, down smash. Look, we talked about that on the first stock, and unfortunately this time it gets punished. But look at the option coverage out of it. And I jumped way too far back again. I'm gonna work on my uh, jumping back. But we'll, we'll see it again. Here we go. He's off stage, and he's going to up air once, and then he's going to up air again until he makes it back. And then if he's in an edge guard situation, down air, down smash. Just like that. So simple and so smart. And it gets punished only because Coke picks the one option that can beat that. The one thing that does really well against that down air, down smash edge guard is regular getup. And the regular getup is near unpunishable for like every character because there's only one frame of punishable lag. Um, but Holy Nightmare can now start to read it. That's the cool thing is only get up, regular get up shield beat, beats out that down smash. So Holy can say, ah, okay, if I put out a down air, maybe he'll do regular get up and I'll just run up and grab him. And it's, and it's a really, really potent mix up. And while we're here, let's talk about how amazing Rob's edge guarding is. Uh, let's see if I can correctly back up like four seconds. There we go. Um, there we go. Let's do that. Holy Nightmare, because he's uh, Rob and Rob has tons of height just by jumping around and up being, gets all of this space to both laser and gyro. You see, this gyro could cover this or anywhere down here. And of course, Luigi has a fairly linear recovery. He has to side B over and then use tornado and up B to get back. And even if he tries to go high, Holy has the option of lasers, which can cover anything above him. So this really forces Poke into this very specific situation where he either has to air dodge and Holy can go for this down air. He gets grabbed before he can down smash because he down aired twice. But he, he forces Poke into really weird recovery timings, and sometimes Poke actually just ends up dying for it. 
Good S smash, and here we go. That this edge guarding coming into play force you to air dodge so I can hit you with laser. And at this point, you're just dead. You're screwed. Snipes him with the gyro, and that is the entirety of that game. But like, look how simple it was. Look how simple Holy Nightmare look makes his character look. Right? He literally just went for nares and gyros in neutral that almost always worked because Polk didn't really know how to deal with it. When he was when Holy was off stage, Holy would up air until it worked. Literally. He just up aired and he's like, oh that didn't work, let me do it again. Oh that that one didn't work, let me do it again. And unless his opponent is shielding, he goes for it every time. Even um who else uh what else? Oh yeah the edge guarding the edge guarding super good too because he can just go for lasers and gyros if Luigi's nowhere near the edge. And if Luigi is near the edge, he has this down air to down smash defense that covers a lot of options and is really hard to deal with. Poke actually did a really good job of dealing with that, but uh, the rest of this game just gets thrown out of proportion. Holy Nightmare just, just decimates him. Um, as we're going to... Oh god, oh I opened Chrome Hope, what am I doing? We're going to jump into another game that I really enjoyed and wanted to do some analysis of. Switch back over to the analysis view. This is Nakat versus Holy Nightmare Game 2. Uh, Nakat had won Game 1, and Holy Nightmare counterpicks him here to awesome. Duck Hunt. We'll get this. Oh, no, there we go. Counterpicks him to Duck Hunt. So D Duck Hunt is actually really good for Rob, as we're about to see. And one of the things that actually I think happens in this game is Holy Nightmare just gets in Nakat's head. Just absolutely starts downloading him, as you'll see by the end of this game. He actually just stops nairing and plays the entire neutral game with Gyro. It's really cool to see. And we'll just start watching it for, again, half a second because what is Holy Nightmare going to do as soon as the game starts? Gyro is out immediately. Already just starts charging it. When he sees that Nakat is shooting lasers, he doesn't have to do that charge mix-up he did in the last game we saw. Instead, he just puts it out. And this is why Duck Hunt is really good for Rob. There's a lot of ground space. Look at how big the ground of this stage is. So Holy Nightmare has the ability to advance forward and shoot out a gyro, and he's still actually equally as close to the gyro as Nakat is. So not only does Holy Nightmare have good stage position just by virtue of being in a better spot on stage, he also has the gyro in place in a great position for him. Duck Hunt, you will see on this stage, he almost always is able to just put the gyro down in a good spot, and the cat just can't do anything about it. It's it's pretty wonderful to see. In this case, the cat is actually going to run over and grab the gyro, but Holy Nightmare just like starts putting out nares. He just starts testing the waters. It's really, really, really smart. The cat runs over, grabs it, and Holy's like, all right, let's just see what nares do to you. So goes for all sorts of falling nares, and he actually takes a bit of damage for it. Finally connects there. But what does he do? As soon as he's done nairing, he tries to shoot gyros. And look at this. This is actually a really neat position um, that Holy Nightmare gets himself into a lot. Where he gets in the cat um, basically right near the edge. And then Holy can stand in a place where he can charge a gyro. And the gyro covers to about right here. Like with no charge. And the thing about this position is Nakat is forced to deal with the gyro somehow. And every time Holy Nightmare either like gets it right or gets away unpunished. So for example, this time, um, Nakat is either going to shine or shield it. Because uh, this, this actually happens so many times, I don't even remember. But in this situation, Holy Nightmare puts out the gyro and he says, Ah, I think Nakat is actually going to come in high, so let me nair. And Nair is a pretty big commitment from Holy Nightmare, but he's going to get away for absolute free because of the awesome positioning he gets on this gyro. As we're going to see in just a second. He, oh, he doesn't even throw the gyro. That's how good it is. He forces Nakat to shine, and Nakat just and he just doesn't even throw it out. And, and because of that, Holy Nightmare gets to run all the way over here, just throwing out Nair, Nair, Nair. And Nakat just runs back to this edge. Nakat actually spends a lot of time... The cat actually spends a lot of time like here and here because of how well Holy Nightmare just controls the stage throughout this entire set. It's super cool. 
So getting right back into it, throws out the gyro, finally Nakat gets it, but Holy literally, even when the, the gyro was um, reflected, Holy was still in a good position to go up to it, grab it, and just take it back. And now he's back in control of the gyro. And now we see the first instance of what happens when the gyro is out. Um, I didn't get a chance to talk about this in game one because Holy never really got control of the gyro in a way that gave him this control. Also, shout outs to uh, uh, Shiny Hunter Ruby. I'm glad you're here to watch. So, now that Holy has the gyro, a lot of this game actually changes because with the gyro, Holy suddenly has a lot more movement options with Glide Toss. And the cool thing about Glide Toss is that if Holy Glide Tosses in any direction, but throws the top down, he can pick it up immediately, and es he's essentially wave dashing at that point. He, you know, he, it costs him a few more frames, but with the top in hand, he just appears either here or here with the top still in hand. And because of the movement, Nakat will do things like this. He'll sit and shield expecting a gyro, or he'll sit and shine expecting a gyro. Because just like when Holy was charging the gyro, there's still that threat to the left and right of him, of that projectile coming in, but with less commitment of him charging it. With it in his hand, he has the ability to literally just put it down in front of him and gain space. Like, that's how good having the gyro in his hand is. And we're going to see him use the gyro over here. He's um, he's actually going to force the cat over to the ledge, and Holy is going to uh, glide toss it down over here, and then run past... And then just put out a safe nair, like, in the air, because he can. He ha He's getting reads for later in the set by, by using this awesome control. And later you're going to see him exploit these reads that he's getting now. But for right now, all he's really doing is getting good positions and nairing to see if it'll work. So here he goes, grabs it, glide toss down, nair. And gets no punish for it, too. In fact, he's still in an advantageous position. Gets him with the beep boop, as it's called, uh, lovingly by, by uh, Juice Doom. Falling nares, no punish, more nares. Like, look how safe these nares are. He's almost never punished for them. And now he has the top back in his hand, so what is he going to do? He's going to glide toss all over the place, and Nakat is going to sit and shield. So cool! So cool. No one thinks of Rob as like a fast character, and Holy Nightmare just kind of like makes it work. And he just gets control of the stage. He almost always has the gyro out for the rest of this game. Nakat finally gets control here, so he's going to do a bit of damage. But when Holy Nightmare gets back with that Nair, and Nakat's still doing some more damage. And he gets this grab to up air, I think? Oh no, he doesn't get the timing quite right. But he's he's still mostly in control, and with that gyro, he gets an edge guard situation. And again, now this this situation super sucks for Nakat, and I think we were already talking about this. Look at where the gyro is. It's look at it, this this space is now blocked off. Nakat has this much space to work with, and Holy has all of this stage, all of Duck Hunt is his now. And because of that, Nakat has to slowly walk up and try and pick up the gyro, where he knows he's risking a lot of time by doing that. He can also try and walk up and power shield it. And I feel like Holy Nightmare like knows that that's what Nakat's going to do and still just like nares in place. Like Holy Nightmare nares in place for so many of these, and then by the end of the set, he just like reads every single one of them. Oh, here he goes. Yeah, he just nares right there. He's like, I don't, I'm just going to keep you in a bad position. I'm just going to make you hate your space. In this situation, Holy Nightmare does a great job of edge guarding. And this is something really cool that um, Rob can do, is that with F-Smash, he can actually snap break right here. Um, and this forces Nakat to go high. Um, and then Holy Nightmare just completely whiffs the punish. It's actually hilarious. Um, Holy My Nightmare with the freest kill of all time, like just doesn't get it. <laughs> How sad. But who cares, he can just throw out gyros and be safe. And more safe nares and safe gyros. And he's gonna come down with nair, because, you know, why not? Nair is such a good move, and then he gets an up throw. 
And why did that up throw work? Well, if we back up just a couple seconds, we can see... Whoops. Oh, even more. A couple more seconds. Why did this up throw work? Well, Nakat is here. Nakat's here. He can either land on this gyro, he can land on Holy Nightmare, or he can land here. I mean, he doesn't want to... He could go off stage, but he, he doesn't want to do that. That sucks. So... Landing on Holy Nightmare, he's already done so far this game, and he doesn't want to risk that. He doesn't want to land on the gyro, because he can just get picked up for free. So he picks sort of the obvious option, which is this middle option, and I mean, Holy Nightmare just grabs him. <laughs> the, the cat had nowhere to go at that point, because Holy Nightmare just covered everything with his amazing play. It's really cool. And then what happens at low percent, gyro isn't actually that good, so he gets up smashed. Uh, Literally threw a gyro. It kind of sucks. And the cat just like takes the hit and just like gets him. <laughs> Awkward. But now, as I was saying, for the rest of this game, the cat or er, Holy Nightmare very rarely uses Nair. A lot of this, the rest of this set is is gyro focused, and he just gets reads. Look, he's putting it near the edge. Look at how high the cat has to go. The cat just cannot get stage control with how well Holy Nightmare is playing. Oh, gyro right in front, and finally, my favorite read. If I can back up a couple seconds, this this basically, this situation exemplifies everything that Holy Nightmare has been doing this entire set. He puts he puts down the gyro, he's gotten a cat concealed to this space, and Holy just is going to walk up and grab him. Literally just walks up and does it. And the cat sits in shield and takes it. He's out of options at this point because Holy's stage control is just so good. Good nares, more safe damage. Quick little side note for those that don't know, um, nair into fair as Rob actually is a combo at low percents. And he just sort of like throws it out right here. Uh, he gets the nair and he just smacks him. So I mean, bonus damage for, for Holy Nightmare. And I really like this play from Holy Nightmare. He's going to up air right there. And literally, he has spent this entire game uh, catching the cat's landings. And this one time, he's just going to go for another up air. It just throws the cat off completely. Really solid mix up. And just gets the gyro out. And the cat's stuck again. Like, holy, just gets good stage position from nothing. Glide tossing all over the place. Throwing out nares and gyros until he wins. And the movement is so crisp, and the cat kind of gets lost. When the cat does get in, he does a lot of damage, but it's pretty obvious that Holy wins the neutral game a lot more than the cat does. Falling Nair gets a spot dodge down smash, thinking that he's playing brawl. And again, look, the cat, uh, the cat off stage, what went to the ledge, so the cat was sitting here. Holy puts the gyro right here. This beats this. This gyro right here literally beats get up, get up, attack, and roll. So what does he do? He jumps, and Holy is right there waiting for him. It's just everything covered because of the insane stage control he gets from this gyro. And it's just super smart. Super simple, super smart, super straightforward. Falling with Nair again because, I mean, might as well. It's basically safe on shield. So Holy's just looking for a way to close this game out, and like I said, you see very few nares from him at this point. Just even when he throws the gyro away, he just resets. Because I mean, Nakat's trying to camp him with lasers, but it's just not going to work at this point. Goes for up throw, Nakat vectors it pretty well. Oh, and look, did you see that situation that he got the first stock from? Um, shout out to Nakat for changing it up this time. Uh, look at this. Here's Nakat. Here's the gyro. Here's Holy. So Nakat actually falls down and he says, screw that, and double jumps back up and lands on the uh, this faux platform right here. Holy actually runs in and tries to grab him again, but doesn't get it because Nakat had a jump. I think he, ex he didn't think Nakat had a jump. <laughs> and he's like fishing for that grab, like, no, 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 this worked last time, come on. And Holy just using glide tossing, staying ahead, staying in good position. <laughs> and even even when he might have a good spot, he retreats to the gyro and he sets up again. And just literally all he does for the rest of this game. 
is set up with Gyro until he wins. And the cat finally power shields one and gets in, but all he gets is that grab. Catches him with laser, has a nice edge guard situation. Good pivot F tilt, and then one more time. The edge guarding, if you see, um, the cat is actually up being here because Holy threw a gyro that went there. So this angle is actually really hard for Fox to pull off. So what the cat is going to do is he's going to go high and Holy just hard reads it and gets the, gets the kill. So really, really, really smart play. Um, he, he, Holy Nightmare plays that game really well and then just dominates game three. I mean, he's he's just in the cat's head at this point because the cat just doesn't seem can't seem to figure out how to take stage control from Holy when he has that gyro on the field. Um, I've got a question. How do I rank Rob? I think Rob is is definitely high tier. I kind of like where a lot of the tier lists place him. He's not a top tier contender by any means, but he has a lot of tools. Uh, when mixed with a lot of smarts can create good play, as we're seeing right here. Holy Nightmare just is an incredibly smart player. He puts a lot of pressure on his opponents with smart move plays, and he takes stage control really quickly and really effectively, and and just picks apart in a cat in Game 3. We're not going to look at Game 3. We're actually going to look at one other game. Uh, we're going to look at him versus Black Twins, and this is uh, from the set that Holy actually won. This is the one where Holy brought it back in Losers Finals. Holy lost 2-1 um, in Winners Semis, and then in Losers Finals takes it 3-1. So definitely felt uh, felt a lot better about the matchup uh, going into this. I also like to talk about uh, Battlefield. We are talking about this in the first set um, I, uh, I, I looked at. Rob definitely has problems landing, but... Because a lot of people don't know how to deal with his nair, and the, the, the nair isn't an end-all be-all for Rob's landing, and it's honestly like a big, like, it's a, you know, when Rob's are doing that, you know, they gotta cross their fingers, hope that nair works out. Battlefield gives him other options. He can land on platforms um, from high up, he can do empty lands, he can do um, air dodges and stuff like that. So, uh, I don't like Battlefield as a counterpick for Mario. Um, I think if you want to counterpick Rob, you should take him to it's hard to say, because if you take him to somewhere open and flat, like FD or an Omega stage, he just he puts the gyro out, and you actually have no other ways to get in. I think Black Twins would have done well against uh, uh, against Holy Nightmare on FD, simply because Black Twins just has this ability to stick to Holy Nightmare really hard. And we're going to see that. The last two games I showed you was Holy Nightmare keeping people out pretty effectively. But in this set, Black Twins kind of gets in, and sticks to him, and doesn't let go a lot of the time. And that's where Rob really suffers, and we'll just see how Holy Nightmare deals with that. What is the best tactical way to win a Smash game? What a very vague question, chat. <laughs> I don't know what I answered that. So here we go, getting right into it. He actually doesn't charge the gyro. Or, I'm sorry, he does charge the gyro, but because, um, because Battlefield... You're not exactly covering the same thing. So Black Twins just gets right here where the gyro doesn't work and Holy's forced to roll and he starts off in a bad spot. So again, another reason why Battlefield may not be the best for Rob. Because it's not the same amount of gyro control he had in other flat stages. And just look at this damage that's coming in from Black Twins. Finally, um, Holy gets away and he does a good roll. And he tries to set up with, you know, weird mind games and get his tire out, but he's already having trouble landing. He gets to the platform, which is really smart. Like, look at how Black Twins is always on him. Holy hasn't been able to get, like, two gyros out. And even when he has, he hasn't been able to use it for stage control. Notice how in the game with Nakat, Nakat was doing a lot of retreating and shooting lasers. But for the most part, we've seen a lot of this game happen at this range. This is where Black Twins and Holy Nightmare have been fighting. So you're going to see a lot more Nair to try and get out of situations, and actually a lot more rolling. Holy Nightmare relies a lot on smart rolls to get out of bad situations. 
Um, and he, I, I'm not sure if he already fired a gyro, but like he tried to fire a gyro and it just like ended up over here. So it's it's a really rough situation if your opponent knows how to get in on Rob. And that's the key to beating Rob is getting in on him. He's a terrible combo weight uh, for Rob. He gets comboed super free, and it's really rough for him. Oh, yeah. And he throws a gyro and it's just already gone. So Black Twin's showing, you know, definitely good at this matchup. But, oh look! That what were we talking about earlier? Holy Nightmare just up airs. Up airs, and then up airs until it works. Um, I actually tested this myself. You can, if you start up being like around here, like if, if this is where you use the start of your up B, you can get four up airs in before, and then get make it back to the ledge. Like, no joke. Like, you can just keep harassing that ledge until until they let you back. And that was a really smart get up attack uh, to cover that landing from Black Twins. So in this situation, you know, Holy Nightmare is having to do a lot more read-based close quarters combat, uh, which is not at all what he had to do against the cat. As you see, he just gets a pivot grab here, really smart grab, into the beat boop combo, which of course is down throw up air for a little. And, um, let's see here. This is actually one of my favorite baits, uh, that, this is one of my favorite things that Holy Nightmare did, and, and across all of these sets. Um, Black Twins has dropped the gyro over here, and he's landing right here. Um, Holy Nightmare is going to look like he's going for the gyro. He's going to walk over here and just S-smash. Like, <laughs> just straight up really smart bait. Like, I think Black Twins, like, flashes his shield, and Holy just, like, calmly walks to the side and just smacks him in the face. Of this match. It was <laughs> like, <laughs> what a read. And here we go, Holy in that edge yard situation. Down air, down smash. Oh, gets punished. Almost had all the options covered, but Black Twin's really smart holding his shield through that entire down smash. Beep, boop. And that's another good thing to note about the beep boop combo for those that don't know. Um, the beep boop is, of course, down throw up air. If your opponent mistimes the air dodge, um, you still get the up air, and possibly the kill. Uh, if, if Holy Nightmare had hit with any more hits of that, the damage would have been enough to kill. Black Twins, with some great vectoring, is able to live through this. Um, but just be aware that, as a Rob player, it's actually pretty pretty often a good idea to go straight for Beep Boop. Um, sometimes you see people wait for the air dodge, and that's also pretty smart, but if you, if you think you can guarantee the kill and break through the air dodge, then it's not, it's not a bad idea to just go for it. And again, more smart things from uh, Black Twins. Holy Nightmare put a top here and sat here while Black Twins was on the ledge. <laughs> and Black Twins just waited until that top disappeared, which was really smart. It gave him a way back. He gets to this platform for free. And uh, Holy Nightmare is able to punish it, but still, it's it's definitely a good mix-up. To, to put the top down, but Black Twins just gets rid of it. And that's what a lot of players fighting against Rob need to know, is fighting it is waiting for that gyro to go away is reasonable when you're in a bad situation. But look, the top's out. Holy Nightmare does a little bit. He uses it to get back, kind of. He doesn't up air, he kind of throws it instead. And he gets a beat boot. Get some really quick damage. And that's that's pretty, pretty much what Rob wants. Um is Rob wants to just get in and get really quick hits because he he hits really hard and he needs to get out as soon as those hits are done because he can't risk Mario coming down with a down air and doing something out of it. So he's just being really safe getting hits and then just retreating all the way away. And right there he actually overextended going for that down air. And he's going to roll here, getting out of that situation and staying on the other side of the stage. Pretty smart. And this he actually kind of messes up. Um, he goes for a fair, and then he tries to up air. So now he's clearly out of fuel. And I think he went for this. I think he honestly went for this up air because he knew he was ahead. I think he. I think he just wanted any damage he could get before he died. I think he just assumed he was dead and just went for it. So he puts on four more damage and then he dies. I mean, not bad, right? Seventy-two to zero on on last stock in losers finals. Like we take that. Good rolls. Get, tries to get away, but this is the issue of, you know, Mario getting in. I mean, the damage is real. But good Nair actually just beats out up smash, and that's one of the things a lot of Mario's will be 
trying to up smash Rob when Rob can just fall down and there on them. But he has to time it right too. He has to space it correctly. The problem with um narrowing as Rob, in fact we can jump back to it just to see if I can get it. <coughs> the problem with narrowing as Rob onto someone charging an, an up smash. Uh, I guess it's not here. But the issue is you have to space it correctly. You have to get the sideways hitbox. If you actually nair on top of Mario, Mario will hit you. Mario will beat out nair in that situation. But Holy Nightmare, of course, practices with ally. And look at that. What 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 happens in the beat boop if you get a good read? You just wait for the air dodge. So smart. And it was actually a really good way to get this grab because he did that, that this glide toss movement again. Um, and this glide toss movement has really helped him out. We'll watch it one more time, just for good measure. Puts out the top, and then glide toss is here to shield, to wait, doesn't even go back for the gyro. Just waits and punishes this landing. He gets in position so soon, but he's just, he's he reads it so well. Grabs him, waits for the air dodge, and it's over. So there it is. That's that's Holy Nightmares Rob, looking super super good. I'm only gonna do those three games because it's already been like 40 minutes, and I'm trying to shorten my analyses down a little bit, see if people enjoy them at a faster pace. But of course, if anyone in the chat has any questions about Rob or anything they want to know, let me know. We'll talk about Rob. Any questions? This is question time. Someone asked if I've ever analyzed Pac-Man. No, I've only analyzed Sonic and Rob. I did Sonic um, when 6WX was on top. I looked at some of his replays, and I just I really liked how Holy Nightmare was playing. Um, so I, I wanted to do some analysis of his Rob because it was just so smart and so well executed, especially against the cat. He just he he he. He made it look easy against the cat, and it's not easy at all, but he just did so well. That was that was a great great set. Am I doing viewer battles? No, I don't I don't own Smash 4. <laughs> uh I, I mostly just play at Xanadu. And at friends places. Uh, yep, just doing analysis. What frame does Rob's Nair come out? Um, that is a good question. And I actually meant to look up Smash 4 frame data before I started. I want to say it's the same as um, Brawl, but I'm going to double check just in case. Actually, it doesn't actually look like his frame data exists. Awkward. Yeah, the, there's there's a lot of because Smash Four is so new. There's a lot of little there's a there's a little bit of misinformation about frame data. So I I decided I wasn't gonna trust it for the most part. One of Rob's big issues is returning to the stage after being juggled. Beyond falling nares or going for ledges, what other options do you see? That's that's actually a very good point. Um, and somehow Holy Nightmare made it look easy. Rob's landing game is garbage. He just doesn't have a good way to hit the ground. Um, and Holy Nightmare makes it work with these falling nares. The only other thing that I saw him do across every set was he would fare out of up B just to end the up B as, as quickly as possible, and then he would air dodge to the ground. Aside from that, he has good movement. On stages with platforms, he'll land on platforms a lot. Um, Against the cat, he literally like nared every time, and the cat always either ate it or shielded it. Um, and there, and, and I think that's a fox thing too. Characters that can beat out nair make Rob's life hell. They make Rob's life absolute hell. In brawl, um, Marth could just back air through nair, and like Rob couldn't land. Like that was it. He doesn't have wave bounce mix-ups anymore, like he did, or I'm sorry, B reverse mix-ups, like he did in brawl. His back air is way laggier in um, Smash 4 than it was in Brawl, so you can't use it to gain more momentum. Unfortunately, Rob's landing game actually feels super garbage, but against the but Ro Holy Nightmare did a really good job with his mix-ups. Um, aside from just mixing it up between Nair and Fair Air Dodge, he mixed up the timing of how he did it, which was also really good. Is he would stall with up B at a high point in the stage. And, and watch his opponent's movement before he picked a landing option. And sometimes he would stall in such a way 
that it would look like he was going to nair, and then he would just like calmly fall to a platform. Like some really smart stuff with that. So mixing up the timing is Rob's best tool, aside from just going for nair when you think it's right. If you do the same timing every time, obviously you'll get red and beaten up. So you got to be really careful. What character am I planning to do an analysis on next? I have no idea. Whatever is good, whatever looks interesting. Yeah, so like I was saying, bears bears are definitely a th were a thing in Brawl. You would use bears to move around and, and change your landing. Um, but I just feel like it's so laggy in this game. Like you, you really have to put it in the right spot. And I feel like even if you do, characters like Fox and Sonic can actually just like, like if you back air this way and Fox is here, Fox can actually just wait for back air to come out and just run all the way through and still punish you. Because back here is just super laggy in this game. It's 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 frustrating, honestly. All right, do we have any other questions? I think this was a successful bit of analysis. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Shout out to my viewers today. I'm gonna be putting this up on YouTube in just a second. All right, hope you guys had fun. I of course am Reslives. Shout outs to Rob, who's still on screen winning winning stuff. I'm Reslived. You can follow me on Twitter. My Twitter's right up there. And I'm also on uh, stream as Xanadu a lot, so you can check me out there as well. Twitch.tv slash bgbootcamp. Thanks a lot, guys. I will turn off the stream in just a second. I'm glad you guys enjoyed it. Um, if you guys are interested, you can check out...